welcome to Deconstructing History, the podcast where we talk about all things living history and reenacting. I am your host, Mike Baker. In today's episode, I want to start a series of podcasts and hopefully in the future some videos uh, to help give uh, shape and form to this idea of research and what is research, how do we conduct research in order to craft our portrayals and sort of go through a step-by-step process in each video. In our first episode of Deconstructing History, I asked our panel a relevant question to reenacting. I had asked them, what does go do your research mean to you? Many times when you search through the numerous reenacting forums or a reenacting group social media, go do your research is a common response to questions. This response is often made towards new or green reenactors. Uh, the statement is even sometimes used in response to a query by a veteran reenactor. On its face, it seems that go do your research is a reasonable response to any question from a person or a reenactor. But one consensus that was reached by my guests and a belief I personally hold is that go do your research without any guidance or clarification or training is not only very unhelpful, it might even hurt the hobby of reenacting and living history. Researching, like other skills, often require training and practice. For the population of new reenactors, I would wager that a small minority of them have in-depth research experience or engaged in scholarly research or are trained in it. So in a way, go do your research almost has no meaning. But for me personally, research does hold a specific meaning. Having both a bachelor's and master's degree in history, I was no stranger to research methodology. As a current PhD student in public policy at an R2 institution, one that places so much emphasis on research, I spend nearly half my week just in research and engaging uh, in research activities. To those who have engaged in it, research has a particular form and structure. It has certain rules as well. One purpose of this series is to hopefully provide one or two definitions of what it means to research something and at least one process to help in conducting one's own research for reenacting purposes. While this is not intended to be an end-all be-all, I think it may be helpful to break down what we mean by research and provide structure. In this series, I would also like to talk about some of the pitfalls to avoid and some practical skills so that your own research process may become more industrious. Finally, I also will use some of my own projects to provide some context and a real world example uh, for this methodology. In terms of thinking like a historian or researching and writing like one, I do have some texts I recommend. These are works that I had used in my own university career and they also helped formulate my own personal methodology for researching my reenacting portrait. Now, small disclaimer, of course, you don't have to prescribe to just my method um, or anybody else's. Some people may find different methodologies uh, better than others. Now, my method, uh, this may help up and coming reenactors or those uh, without any research background to have something to see while developing their own methodology. It may create some foundation or framework uh, that can be built upon or altered uh, later. In terms of text, first, I do recommend Writing History by William Kelleher Story, followed by The Historian's Toolbox, uh, written by Robert C. Williams, and A Pocket Guide to Writing in History by Mary Lynn uh, Rampala. And finally, The Information Literate Historian by Jenny L. Presnell. Um, it is kind of interesting to think about reading books on reading books, but I believe these are um, very important resources to use. Uh, they're very inexpensive, and uh, I will drop links down in the description for this episode. For them. But I do recommend uh, getting a hold of them and referring back to them on occasion. Uh, Separately, these works are fine, but together they provide a a fantastic amount 
of information in conducting serious and in-depth research, especially for uh, reenactors. They also offer their own tips and tricks and ways to avoid the pitfalls while researching, which uh, these pitfalls may hinder you. They could also waste your time. So uh, these are excellent trips, tricks to, to consider. Finally, while not meant for uh, historical research, I do recommend uh, case study research and applications by Robert K. Yin. Uh, even though it's a social science text um, and I've used it in my PhD career, I find it uh, that some of the tips Yin provides, uh, I think, are also applicable to uh, research for reenactors, especially if we consider our portrayal a type of case study. Now, research can be broken down into stages. Uh, sometimes you are able to revisit a previous stage, and each stage can have their own smaller steps uh, within. In researching for reenacting, the final product can also be much different than, say, if you were publishing an academic paper or a book or a panel presentation. Instead, you may be collecting information in order to create uh, one of your portrayals. You may be getting information so that you can craft a presentation for the public. You may be taking up a historic craft and you're experimenting on historic techniques. Research methodology can be adapted to these endeavors. Now, a simplified overview of the stages that are adapted for reenacting, or, or my own methodology is as follows. First, you do want to develop your interest or topic and narrow this down. Second, you need to gain the background knowledge on what it is you are researching. And this will help you uh, later on when you enter stage three, where you find and evaluate the sources you want to use. The fourth stage, you want to draft the notes um, and, and create reminders for yourself. And uh, finally, after you get enough information and notations, you may want to start your project. Now, say you want to join a reenacting group and you want to create a portrayal. Now what? There are millions of websites, forums, books, merchants, all at your fingertips. And I believe this can be intimidating at times and sometimes confusing with having access to all this information and being bombarded uh, with sources. So where does one start? By applying a methodology or framework, a researcher can stay on track and can always return back to uh, this framework in order to remain organized and um, to sort of see where they're at. Interestingly enough, um, there are different ways to go through these stages. Uh, you don't necessarily have to do, say, all of the research for your entire portrayal for every piece of the kit and then work on collecting it. You can also do it incrementally. Uh, you can, say, start researching the individual pieces and work on those as you go, for example. Um, so there are uh, different ways you can uh, do this. It's not uh, really a one-size-fits-all um, approach. But before you even begin research, um, you need step one. You need to figure out what it is you're interested in and what it is you are trying to research. What is the big question? Sometimes this step is easier said than done. You know, for example, you may be motivated to join a particular reenacting group and you have limited knowledge in sort of what the portrayal is or what the historical background is, which is cool. You know, there's no problem with that. Um, so you may not know what it is you are interested in. You may have just seen the time period or the costuming, and all of a sudden it just gets the gears turning in your brain, and you just know you want to do it. You just don't know what it is uh, that you're really interested in. Or you may have interest in a particular time period of portrayal, but you do not have the in-depth knowledge about it yet that you desire. So maybe think about or meditate upon what it is you're actually interested in, or why is it a particular portrayal or time period sticks in your mind? What is your motivation, as they often say in acting class? Perhaps you saw a particular type of portrayal in a film or video game and thought it was cool, 
or you went to a reenactment and a specific group stuck out to you. You saw the thousands of photographs of reenactors on social media, or maybe a particular topic in history class keeps being revisited in your mind. All of these are some of the many inspirations that got people into reenacting um, or helped generate interest in a portrayal. Um, so once it is, once you figure out what it is you want to do, um, you should get the background um, information on this. You, you should start developing that. Now, using my own interests as an example, uh, I am currently in the early stages of researching and putting together a kit for first century Western Han infantrymen. As for exploring my own interest, I decided on pursuing this particular portrayal uh, for a number of reasons. First, I have always had an interest in East Asian history going back to high school. Uh, as an undergraduate and graduate student, Eastern uh, Asian history and military history were my secondary and tertiary uh, fields of study. Uh, even now that I switched to being a policy scholar, some of my policy interests involved the Central and East uh, Asian countries. As a volunteer for the Arms and Armor program at the West Art Museum, I believe that there could be more programming for East Asian arms and armor uh, to complement their current collection, uh, as well as accentuate their first century Roman program uh, to act as sort of a counterbalance. Also, seeing some of the portrayals of East Asian foot soldiers in Canada and China, I think it's interesting and exciting. So there are a few of my reasons for de developing uh, this type of portrayal. And so again, you kind of want to understand what it is that you want to research. Now, once you figured out what it is you're interested in or what the major question uh, that you want to answer in, in terms of uh, your research, whether you're doing an entire portrayal or just researching parts for your kit, uh, whatever your project is, uh, the next step is to have the necessary background reading in it. And so that will be um, step number two, which I'll go into more depth uh, in our next part of the series. So until next time. That's it for our show today. Thanks to all of our guests and thanks to everyone listening. This is Deconstructing History.